Welcome back, Soulful Society, to Soul Full of Wellness. The multi-generational podcast brought to you by two functional imperfectionists. And certified coaches. Who deliver tips to help you live your most authentic, balanced, and anxiety-free life. Toxins. We can't always avoid them, but we can reduce them and their harmful side effects. Toxins are pervasive and in many of the daily products we use, unfortunately impacting our brain health, hormones, skin health, our nervous system, and even our daily functioning. And while we want to live 100% toxic free, hello fellow perfectionists, it's simply not possible in this day and age. The good news is we here at Soulful of Wellness have composed for you a list of four areas where you can reduce your toxic load, what you can watch out for, and different non-toxic or less toxic products you can switch to so you can be more in control of your health. Ditch the detox. Instead, make these simple adjustments to prevent toxin buildup from occurring in the first place. Thank you, thank you for joining us again for another week of, yes, you guessed it, wellness goodness. If you're new to the Soulful Society, welcome. Thank you for being here. We'd love to have you as a regular listener, so if you enjoyed today's podcast, please consider subscribing so that you'll get a new episode of Wellness delivered automatically every Thursday morning to your phone. And if you like this episode, feel free to share it with a friend who you think would be interested. We appreciate ratings and reviews, so if you haven't yet done that, we would be utmost grateful if you could help us out by tapping that fifth star and typing a few words of feedback about the podcast. Life is toxic, and I feel like that sounds so grim, but I mean, it's reality, and we want to do everything we can to reduce that from the food we eat to the air we breathe there's a lot that's not in our control so today we're taking the power back we're putting in our hands and we're going to discuss lifestyle changes that'll bring a big impact hopefully in your health improvement from some small daily changes that we've noticed through implementing these tools So much of coaching is about helping clients create lasting behavior changes so that they can live healthier happier more fulfilled lives Making new habits is always a challenge. We can't sugarcoat that. But the best way to create change that sticks Mm -hmm. and you're still doing these things after that initial burst of dedication Mm -hmm. (laughs) runs out is to make new habits. So we're talking today about some changes you can make that won't hurt too much, but that will add up and make a big impact on your overall health and well-being. Mm -hmm. So many companies and podcasts and influencers are trying to sell you detox protocols. Drink this tea. Do this cleanse. cleanse. Yes. Or, Or there's just so many false narratives going around like, well, just drink juice for three days or do a water fast. Put these pads on the bottom of your feet while you sleep. It'll just pull the toxins out of you. Yeah, lo and behold, they're activated by sweat. And And of course, they're selling you with this quick fix idea. And that's what you should, that's what you really should run. Because no change is that quick or instant or perfect. Yeah. Yeah, if it's too easy, if it's too good to be true, like, oh, I just put it on the bottom of my feet while I sleep. Great, I can do that. No, if it were that easy, everyone will be doing it. Mm -hmm. I think what a lot of people don't know is that our body is built to detox. So all of these trends that are being thrown your way aren't not only are they not like customizable to your body and they're not taking into account you know your blood work your organs what's going on in your unique body it's like the theme is looking outside of yourself and today we're talking about looking inside of yourself and all your organs want to help you and they can Mm -hmm. and so it's about sort of aiding our bodies and encourage them to do so because we're exposed to so many toxins every day 
and don't want this to be scary because I feel like as a recovering perfectionist I can get really overwhelmed with this kind of thing wanting to be a hundred percent toxin free isn't possible so just start there with your mantra just do a little bit just a tiny bit you're so right our bodies were made they're designed to deal with toxins it's like your body just accepted that it's impossible to live a life free of any contaminants so it thought that's okay it's going to happen. We're prepared to handle it. You have your lymphatic system, your liver, your intestines, your kidneys, and your skin is huge for detoxing. And those things happen as a part of you existing. Mm -hmm. When you do a detox, which is what we're saying, like if you make that choice for yourself, we're not opposed to that in the right conditions. But we're talking today about how to live a life so that that doesn't become a necessity so that you don't reach the point of critical mass where you're feeling the impact and the effects like you're seeing you're having rashes or acne or you can tell your skin's trying to purge Mm -hmm. things so Mm -hmm. very briefly stages of detoxification toxins are stored in your fat when your body's detoxing, either naturally or because you're going through a medically supervised detox, those toxins get released from where they're stored, where they're not necessarily causing that much harm or mayhem in your system. But when released, they're free floating free radicals in your system. That's when they're at their most dangerous. That's when they can do the most harm. Mm. But it's a necessary stage in detoxing to eliminate them. You excrete either by sweating or going to the bathroom. Eventually they leave your body. Let's skip the step where they're free and loose in our bodies while they're detoxing and let's make some small changes that will become habits for things that we do regularly every day. And if we can change a little bit each day so that we're not letting so much in, it won't build up and we all come out ahead. I will say I'm really excited for today's episode and it was really interesting and informative doing the research because I have been through several medically supervised detoxes and I will say they transformed my body entirely. I I, I call it, it's it was the grand reveal of my body that had been hiding under all of that inflammation and all those symptoms. But... I've now found myself kind of back into, you know, my body's overloaded with toxins, which led me to believe like these quick fixes, although I had medically supervised detoxes and they worked, you know, what are the long term solutions? So I don't have to keep, you know, ingesting these things like as these crazy supplements and fasts and things like that. That's expensive too. Even if you oh my god, Kit, have so great expensive. success, oh it's my at god. great expense monetarily and time investment and the changes to your life while you're undergoing it. You know, sometimes you need to have access to the bathroom, and that <laughs> necessitates changing your work life or your social life. Yeah, so we're thinking the more we can avoid the dramatic detox, Mm -hmm. the better off we're all going to be. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's launch in with food. No big surprise that a lot of toxins enter our bodies through what we're eating. Shout out to one of our very own Soulful Society members, Callie. She told us about this incredible new app called Yuka, Y-U-K-A, and it has a carrot icon. This thing is mind-blowing. I've had so much fun with it. I know. I was out of town, and I told you, I texted you about it, and you started sending me screenshots on screenshots. Look at this. Look at this. I'm, like, cracking up. Kaylin was out of the country, hopefully not paying (laughs) international rates, because I was sending her photos of everything. I was just going nuts in my house. I didn't mean to send you everything, but everything, I was like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) I have to send her this one. And then the next one, I'm like, and I have to send her this one. Finally, I was like, okay, that's it. I'll stop. (laughs) So you basically scan everything to see what levels of toxins are in them. I found out that some bun sunscreen, here I am thinking like, oh, yes, I've invested in a non-toxic sunscreen. 
not according to this app. It's going to pull up all of the different things that are horrible for you in these products that are being sold to you in a way that makes you think it's toxin free. So super cool. You can do everything from food labels to skincare products. So thank you, Callie. So cool. It gives you a score and then it breaks down what it objected to. Like mm -hmm. what kept you from getting a better score it gives you details so it's not like gee i wonder what's not good in here it's really specific i feel like this is the tool of all tools for the episode because you can do so much with this and empower yourself to mm -hmm. figure out which products are worth it and which aren't all right so as we know since the rise of agricultural farming and factory farming our food has a lot of contaminants and toxins and pesticides in them. So what can we do? Well, I visited a local farmer's market. Finally, guys, it had been like three years. I'm like, I really want to go. But since COVID, didn't go. Here's the number one thing that we came up with since we can't obviously list all everything in this episode. Hydronated oils. Please watch out for them. Canola oil, vegetable oil, sunflower oil. And this can be really challenging. I was scouring the aisle at Whole Foods to look for dried cranberries and could not find a single brand of dried cranberries that did not have sunflower oil in it. So I had to leave without it. Oh my gosh, I'm shocked. Yeah, I know. The other thing that I tried to look out for is corn, like corn syrup, all the different secret names that they hide it in there but basically corn shouldn't be in so many of the things we put it in it's cheap it's easy it's shelf stable it's not good for us our body like eating an ear of corn fine but our bodies don't want processed corn to the i don't even understand the science behind no, how it I works but how it bonds with our molecules when it gets to that process state yeah corn is the most genetically modified it. crop in in the united states mm -hmm. we see you corn yeah and you'll be surprised if you start looking it's everywhere so it's like you again all right so ewg website annual dirty does it take it take it away Strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, potatoes, and hot peppers. I was very, very sad to read this list because those are quite honestly some of my favorite things and things that in my mind are healthy and we're absolutely not saying and they're not saying don't eat these things. They're just saying be aware that they're the dozen things at the top of the pesticides and mm -hmm. I think they also throw in bacteria mold and mildew don't quote mm -hmm. me on that but some other common things that you don't realize oh I'm eating mold when I eat this peanuts I was shocked when peanuts was on one of the lists of avoid if you are particularly sensitive to certain things and the reason behind it was they have a lot of mold so does coffee unfortunately yeah, about it doesn't too. mean we need to cut out coffee i know and i still haven't switched my coffee over which i know my um nature path she's like girl you gotta switch that over her, her favorite brand is called purity coffee and you do have to buy buy it with the beans and grind them yourself coffee has a lot of mold in it unfortunately here's the thing you could take this dirty dozen list and that's what you can shop for at the farmer's market yes exactly. so at least you know Yes, you know it's locally farmed, sustainable food that you can actually understand where exactly it came from. I will admit I rarely buy organic simply because it's about twice as expensive and I so eat a expensive. lot of fruits and vegetables and that would really make a big difference if I switched completely. But those are now the things that I'll splurge for the organic versus trying to do everything organic, which is just out of the mm -hmm. question. All right, moving on to air. We all know the air is very polluted. So we've got three tools that you can use starting today to decrease that toxic load. So first is an air purifier. Simple, tried and true, 
change the filter, which I tend to forget to do, just like you would change the filters in your house if you're a homeowner. I have one, the brand is blue, like the color. And one thing that I particularly like about it is that it has the interior paper filter. It's probably not even paper, but you know what I mean. The one that you switch every few months. And then it has a cloth, like a nylon stretchy outer filter that whenever I do laundry, I have two of them. So I just swap it out and I can wash that in the laundry. And it's like almost like a pre-filter. And I really like that aspect because, you know, the paper filters are not cheap. <laughs> Once again, being healthy apparently is very expensive. I'm finding that to be a theme here. It is it is it is wild. It's a worthwhile investment, of course, but it is ridiculous. Yeah, investing in your health, but yeah, it makes I a know. difference. So second would be essential oil diffuser. As you guys know, I love, love, love essential oil. Diffusers are a wonderful way to not only make your home smell like a spa, but also cleanse your air. So um, a particular oil that was recommended by my naturopath was Purify Cleansing Oil by the brand doTERRA. And you can also mix and match, like have fun with it. Sometimes I'll do citrus, other times lavender just for calming effect. But um, we love it. We love it. I like tea tree oil because it's a natural antiviral. Mm -hmm. Antibacterial. Oh, I was, wait, that's so weird you said that, viral. Kit, because I just had that on my to-do list. We had... um. A worker come over to give us a quote for closets installs and he was like really like he had a lot of snot <laughs> and he was like touching a lot of things and so I wrote on my to-do list like find tea tree oil because I wanted to diffuse it in my room <laughs> good news for the third thing and you can do this by opening your windows but the third thing is free <laughs> get outside Yes, you can free. open your windows to the same effect, get the fresh air flowing, basically get fresh air moving. So being inside increases your allergenic load. Our favorite tool, get outside, free, easy. If it's cold, just bundle, get that fresh air. Let's go into skin. Oh, this is, this is what we've been waiting for. Yes. I mean, there's so much to, to this. Skin care, you're putting it on every single day of your life twice a day minimum mm -hmm. from what you use to cleanse your skin to moisturize your skin sunblock makeup your hair shampoo conditioner hairspray gels like all of those things are straight up made of chemicals that's why they work but you're bathing yourself knowingly willingly in chemicals twice a day every day it adds up. Mm -hmm. The toxic load. So be conscious of what you're using. That Yuka app, that's where I had the most fun. Yeah, I know you did. Was scanning Skincare. every of the apparently dozens. Like who knew I even owned so many things? Skincare products. Mm -hmm. I will say for house cleaning products, I've switched to Blue Land. They're environmentally friendly and non-toxic. But, you know, they're not as powerful. Like, it's not mm -hmm. Clorox, which is so toxic, but obviously works well. It's not Windex, which, same thing. So, it's sort of a cost-benefit. and It's like a trade-off, you know? But it makes me feel good. <laughs> My sister won't use Clorox wipes. Like, she doesn't even want to touch them. And I'm a huge Clorox wipe fan just because... They work. I know they're killing everything and they're getting it all clean. Mm -hmm. But I might need to change my stance on that a little because I'm gregarious in my use of them. <laughs> it's, it's full on overuse. You'd think I own stock or something. And my sister's really good about it. She'll do Ooh. the vinegar f instead of Windex. Like really healthy. And I know I need to make changes in that direction. It's hard for me emotionally. I know that's weird to say. It's hard for me emotionally <laughs> because I just like what works about the disinfecting properties. But you know, the more I learn about it and the more I read about it, using vinegar does all the same things. I just don't see it as clearly. So somehow it doesn't feel as real to me, but that's my issue. Well, I mean, habits are hard to break and that's why like take mm -hmm. what leaves and resonate what doesn't you know it's like if you for example you just said take what leaves <laughs> i'm tired guys i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay take what resonates and leave the rest 
because that's also a big point of the episode. Like, we can't be perfect with everything. If you want to still use your Clorox, right. use it. And it sounds like you're crushing it in the skincare department and in the food department. You know, we can only do so much. Exactly. And I'm going to take baby steps in my changes. Yeah. You know, I need to be flexible. And I can be. And I will be. So I'm going to take baby steps in that direction. I'm just not willing to throw away all the Clorox wipes yet. <laughs> Okay, this one's really interesting. The EWG says, say no to receipts. Turns out receipts Mm -hmm. have these crazy chemicals on them. So if you can opt for a digital receipt, do it. Obviously, everyone has been talking about switching from plastic to glass or stainless steel. Microplastics are a huge problem and in most of our bodies, which is pretty scary. And then dry brushing. So dry brushing, I I feel like I needed a refresher on like why I have this in my shower and why I do this. It's so that we can get our lymphatic drainage system going, which is going to help kick in our natural detoxifying systems. So move that circulation, get the blood flowing. Lastly is our favorite, sauna. sauna. So you can start slowly with the sauna, 10 minutes at 130 degrees once or twice a week. You can build up the time. You can build up the frequency if your life permits that and work up to even 140 degrees is ideal. We took the thermometer in recently. We weren't at 130. What was it? Like 120? I feel like it was like 117, 118, but we were in it for like 45 minutes. Again, bring a friend. It's so much more fun. I, like, don't want to go without you anymore. I know. (laughs) I don't think I would last very long either. And so I think, like, oh, well, it's not worth it if I don't go with Kaylin because it'll hardly be any time at all. But apparently 10 minutes is a really good start. So it's good to know. We clearly shower immediately afterward. I never really thought about it. I just thought, oh, of course you shower. You're Mm -hmm. all sweaty. Who wants to be all sweaty? But in preparing for this episode, I was reading about how when you sweat, that's your body detoxifying through the skin, getting impurities out. If you don't right afterward shower it off, your body reabsorbs it. It was all for naught. So I think of all those times I went to the gym and sweat, but didn't have time to shower at the gym. I was going home, but then I got waylaid. I bought gas, whatever happened. And I think... Mm -hmm. Ooh, yuck. My body was sitting there reabsorbing all this yucky stuff I just sweat out. All right. Lastly, drinks. Oh, man. We found some disappointing news here. So first things first, check your water supply. Yes. You can type in www.ewg.org slash tap water. Type in your zip code and it's going to pull up all the contaminants in your tap water. Very fun, right? To I learn did it today. What kind of gross things are living in your tap water? I think my zip code is like eight things. It, yeah, it popped up WSSC and I clicked on them and it's, le- I mean, they're a major water supplier in the DMV. It's legal for them to have above level of many contaminants. It was either seven or eight. It was just today. Hard to remember, though. I read a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I think it was seven or eight. And then there were like three others that it wasn't egregious, but they were above. And they weren't just a little above. They were like three times the desired amount. I mean, it was nuts. That's terrifying that that's legal. And I've been very lazy with this. I know Mm -hmm. you have an incredible system at your house. And I've been using the fridge water. Yes. I'm diligent. Yeah, you really are. I've been pretty lazy, so I got to look into that. Well, the refrigerator is filtering something. Like, there's some kind of filter in there. I don't know how much stuff. I have the Kangen, so it's uh, ionic water. It splits the water. And I was reading these charts about ionic water, water versus alkaline water versus, you know, there's so much information out there. But there's water sommeliers now. Oh, I should be that. You should be that. That is so up my alley. Where do you go to school? I don't know. We're going to look into it. Oh my gosh. I've never heard of that, but I love it already. I think it was on uh, Selling Sunset. I think someone on there did that. Oh, it went right over my head. I've seen them all. So two quick things or two more drinks and then we're going to wrap up organic wines okay so this is becoming more and more available the reason why 
it might be in your best interest to opt to organic wines is the farming practices used to produce the grapes do not rely on artificial chemical fertilizers pesticides fungicides or herbicides so so disappointing to learn that like we think wine is good for us and it is if it just doesn't have all these preservatives in them so that's probably why you're leaving so hungover after that dinner party so (laughs) next time you have a dinner party bring Yes, bring the organic wine. A a company that my naturopath recommended was Dry Farm Wines. So check them out. You know I love my fizzy waters, my seltzers, and I'm pretty indiscriminate about which ones I drink. Like I'm not brand loyal in this realm. I'm going to need to pay more so attention. So sad. Because there are some that have lots of... Uh, what was it in them? PFAs. Oh. Yes. And a few of them, like La Croix, I drink regularly. La Croix. La Croix. La Croix. To say. I know. I so act like sad. I speak French, right? I don't. No, but La Croix <laughs> is on the bottom, and like it's not as bad as the rest of them. So the one you really need to watch out for is Polar. And I rarely have that one, thankfully. Although I really do like the bubbly. I like how they put a little bit of the fruit juice in it. It's a Pepsi. So bubbly is number two. Yeah. Yeah, it's owned by Pepsi, but that makes sense, right? Uh, Canada Dry, Poland Spring, and Perrier are all owned by Nestle. So it's like if we trace it back to these like awful companies, we can, it all makes sense, right? Yep. So, and then LaCroix being last. Um, Topo Chico was also on the list as one of the highest PFAs. Yeah, thankfully I don't see that here on the East Coast, uh, or I probably would have had it. Okay, another be aware of is what you're using, like your coffee maker. There are a lot of plastic parts in there you might not be aware of, and that can have a tendency to get moldy and you don't think about cleaning it a lot. Another one is the water cooler. I remember once at work a few years ago switching the tub of water on the water cooler pulling the old one off and I happened to glance down as I put the new one on and uh, spoiler alert for all you out there it's going to be really gross in a second there were dead roaches floating in the water that Uh, I had been drinking I almost threw up and then in in a very dramatic fashion and then I told myself to get a grip that before I knew there were dead roaches floating in my water I wasn't about to throw up and I needed to get a handle on myself, but it has scarred me. I've never been the same since. I mean, why would you? Something to think about. How much do we not realize is not at all sanitary. Well, on, on that, that note, note <laughs> if you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend, someone that you know will appreciate learning about this and would love to join the Soulful Society. We would love to have them. Hope we didn't traumatize you. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Peace, love, and light. Peace, love, and light. The Soulful of Wellness hosts are certified health and wellness coaches. This podcast is intended to inform and entertain listeners on their wellness journey. This podcast is meant to enhance, not replace, listeners' care from doctors, therapists, or other medical providers. So-